Hi class, today we're going to talk about solid principles and with that we're going to conclude our discussion of design. Let's look at them. These are principles uh, that have been introduced by uh, Robert C. Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. He came up with these uh, five principles and if you search Google you find other um, extended discussions of this. Um, if you search YouTube you will find many videos of him. But before he gets to these five principles he will have many stories to share so the videos are usually longer. Uh, single responsibility open closed principle, list of substitution principle, interface segregation and dependency inversion. They are um, going to help you to create programs that are easier to understand or explain, implement or maintain, extend and reuse. So the same ideas that uh, we discussed uh, when we talked about cohesion and coupling and some of them are actually the same ideas just uh, phrased differently so the first one a class should have one and only one reason to change a single responsibility so look at this tool what are the chances that you will use this tool or you will find things that you need if you have this in your uh, travel bag um, if you remember we talked about an ellipse as a geometrical shape now that's your geometrical shape and it should stay like that. It shouldn't be worried about painting or coloring or drawing itself. So uh, when we say one reason to change, is it that reason is logic or some other platform you're working with or the type of user the system is um, providing services to? From all of those, there should be one reason for your class to change. And this is related to uh, cohesion. It's related to a layered architecture. If you remember, we talked about layers. We told you that the business logic is the one that changes uh, very um, uh, unfrequently. And the other two, may change more frequently. So um, put things in different classes if there are different reasons for them to change. Let's go to the next one. Open closed principle. You should be able to extend a class behavior without modifying it. This is a tricky principle because you have to find a sweet spot of uh, openness and closedness. Look at this example here. This is a saving account and depending on whether or not it's regular or salary saving, the rules are different. So, this is a class and there are two different type of instances of it and they uh, work with two different logic okay now you would say this is fine this is a simple if then statement and i would agree with you but what if your banking system evolved and you introduced four five six ten different types of saving accounts just imagine then having an if then or else statement is going to make your program confusing and if the program, this class, is providing services to other classes, you're going to make things very difficult for yourself to maintain in terms of integrity and logic. So a solution, if you were to avoid this, so um, open to extension, close to modification, a solution is this. So you would go with an inheritance hierarchy and you have two different type of accounts. Now I just told you, make sure you understand, this is not a solution for all the scenarios. You 
are um, uh, the one who has the expertise you are the one who understand the business logic and you are the one who will decide when it's time to stop modifying your class and create an inheritance hierarchy instead so um, just making sure everybody understands abstraction versus interfaces because there are two ways of dealing with the principle we just talked about one is abstraction inheritance hierarchies that most of you have worked with and one of them is uh, doing interfaces interfaces unlike um, super classes they have no state no attributes or implementation so they're just there to show that this is a behavior I expect from a, sh a shape I want a shape to a be able to give me its area that's it this is an interface and now you can implement the interface in any different way or as many different ways as you need to and this one is an inheritance hierarchy you see that there are attributes in your super classes those are common for the two or um, the children in general and there are behaviors that could be uh, changed by the children and you've done that this is called overriding look at this example I have an inheritance hierarchy a resizable circle is children of a circle that logical both of them uh, implement interfaces so circle implements a geometric object interface and a resizable circle implements resizable um, so you can mix and match and there are some platforms that allow you to have uh, one parent or multiple parents um, but in general interfaces are um, uh, more flexible you can um, implement as many interfaces as you need to some programs allow you to have one parent some of them allow you to have more than one parent if abstraction is the your chosen way of avoiding modification list of substitution principle is the trickiest one Drive classes must be substitutable for their base classes. Let me give you an example. And here's my example. So this is a hierarchy that I'm giving you. So um, this is your regular light bulb and this is an energy saver light bulb. And imagine you're in dorm room and uh, or apartment room and your light is out and you need a new bulb you go to your roommate and say do you have a light bulb and they give you a energy saver and it's okay it's gonna work for you yes in most cases you can use either and you're having an exam it's gonna work it's gonna light up your room and you're gonna read and study for the exam and you'll be fine now imagine you went to your um, roommates um, room and they gave you a party light bulb instead of a regular one that's not going to help you you will not be able to focus you will not be able to study for the exam or it will be really hard so we call this a right type of abstraction this is wrong why because if this is a child I should be able to use it instead of the parent and in this case no I'm not able to work with a party light in this case yes I can do so Drive classes or children must be substitutable for their parents or else you don't have a logical inheritance hierarchy so when you think about your abstractions and your hierarchies make sure you keep in mind that the children must be able to replace their parents 
if they need to and this child is not able to do that this child is able to do that so going back to the example of accounts uh, this is a saving account and this is a regular salary saving and fixed deposit salary saving so the idea here is that you cannot deposit from here you you cannot withdraw from this account there are rules but you can easily withdraw from the other two what's the issue now if you were to withdraw here and you passed a fixed deposit saving account you get an error and the solution is this you're going to have one more layer account with withdrawal account without withdrawal and then you have that fixed deposit saving account down here now it's easily for you um, doable to do past the child as the parent if you need to so extra layer of protection or attention to your inheritance hierarchy.